My name is Jolyon Brumhall Arnold and I'm a, a, a nephew of Clement Arnold. He was the third of my four uncles in my father's family uh, who came from Landidno in North Wales. Clem was the third of four brothers. They all volunteered, so they all started in the infantry. But the two oldest brothers, uh, uh, Bill and Arthur, before the war they had served marine engineering apprenticeships at Harland and Wolfe in North, Northern Ireland. So they were engineers. And when they started with the tanks, uh, they were taken into the tank corps because they were engineers and therefore would understand them much better. And having seen his two older brothers go into the tank corps, I think Clemp thought it was quite interesting and applied to join them. The British had developed this new tank, which they called a Whippet. Uh, it, it only did eight miles an hour, but nothing moved at eight miles an hour on the uh, war fronts at that time. So it was quite a new innovation. Uh, and so uh, Clement Arnold, for the sake of example, he was able to travel right across the face of the battle between the Germans and, and, and the British uh, without actually being hit by the Germans because they weren't used to tra tra uh, tanks traveling at that speed. Uh, and the tanks were heading east uh, and Clem was more or less at the front of the field. Uh, so he went off uh, uh, behind the German lines just sh shooting up whatever uh, target he could see. Uh, this went on for about five or six hours until eventually the Germans managed to bring up some artillery guns and they managed to shoot up the tank which caused it to, to, to catch fire and then the crew had to bail out. No, they didn't all survive. They, they, all three of them got out but all three of them, their clothes were burning. So they got onto the, onto the ground and rolled about to try and get the, uh, the, the fire out. They weren't very popular with the Germans because they had killed quite a lot of Germans in that area. Yeah. Uh, and while they were trying to put the flames out in the clothes, they got surrounded by Germans who then attacked them. And Physically? Yes. Uh, and one of the crew was benited and killed and Clem was benited through his arm, uh, but he managed to hold off the rifle and an officer came up and called his men off. Mm. So Clem had a, an injury to his arm, yeah. but nothing more serious than that. Cle Clem was knocked down uh, and lost consciousness, and when he came to and recovered, uh, everything quietened down a little bit and there was a German officer in command and Clem simply took his watch off and gave it to the German officer for sparing his life. The watch was given to him by his father on his 21st birthday, so it was important to him, obviously. Yes. But when this chap had spared his life, you know, he took it off and gave it to the German officer. Uh, and the German officer took it, but after the war was over, the two of them got together again and the German officer returned his watch to him. He, I think, went deliberately to try and find the chap who, who had captured him, and spared his life, you know, and uh, they became good friends. It's the spirit, I think, of fighting soldiers. There's nothing personal about it. It's like a boxing match. You fight to the kill and then afterwards, you know, you have a chat and uh, shake hands and you're good friends again. Uh, and it's much the same with professional soldiers. But uh, it was felt that his exploit was quite exceptional because it was one of the very, very early cases of a, German, of a tank breaking right through the German lines or the opposition lines and causing havoc. Yeah. So he was awarded the medal on that basis of yeah. his success in the day. When he died, his widow gave all his war memorabilia to the tank museum at that time. So it, I presume it would include the two keys that he had from his tank. His father had set up a drapery shop in Landidno in North Wales and was a good shopkeeper, it was a successful store. Uh, Clem, after the war, his two oldest brothers decided to go farming and went out to South Africa. Uh, Clem was the third brother and he had studied drapery before the war. So he was obviously uh, the best person to take over the, the family shop, if you will. 
photographs. There's quite a nice photograph of the family. I think you've got a copy of that too, with the four brothers in uniform. Yes. Um, at, I, I think it was Christmas 1918. Uh, and two of them were weighing uh, medals and the other two hadn't received their medals at that stage. Um, he was a fairly natural leader of people. He joined the Territorial Army and became a Lieutenant Colonel in the Territorial Army uh, and served in the Second World War. Uh, so, you know, he was a natural soldier.